I've been in the mood for racing games, so I dug up a whole bunch of titles. Most of these probably suck, but that's what we're here to find out. Let's start with LA Street Racing. I'm just going to refer to it as Street Racing from here on out. This is the game that pushed me to create this little series, so it deserves to be the first one reviewed. Street Racing is nowhere digitally, so I played it on my XP machine using a physical copy. I couldn't get it to launch in Windows 10, but I also didn't do a whole lot of tinkering. I got this game in a mystery box from eBay. I streamed it once and immediately fell in love with the aesthetics. Each area has the best atmosphere for street racing. There's neighborhoods, strip malls, mountains, and other unique areas. There's just one problem. I think I've only seen 10% of this game, but more on that in a second. Street Racing was developed by Invictus Games and published by Groove Games. It was released in 2007 here in the US. It was called Overspeed in Europe and released a year earlier. 2006 saw Need for Speed Carbon and 2007 saw Pro Street. That's some tough competition, but Street Racing had one advantage. It's price. From some of the reviews I found, I think this game had a launch price of 20 bucks. But of course, that's a telltale sign that this is a budget game. Well, Groove's name was enough of a sign, but whatever. Budget games are not always bad. However, they do have a common problem of feeling like cheaper versions of much better games. We're going to see that problem a lot in this series. And speaking of budget, they weren't able to license any manufacturers, so all the cars are made up. You can tell from the bodies what the cars are probably supposed to emulate, but don't expect to boot this game up and drive your favorite vehicle. There is an intro you can watch that explains the story. It's just a slideshow with game screenshots. Basically, LA's become the prime place for illegal street racing. Matt Peacock is the king, and you wanted to throne him, for whatever reason. My big question is, what are the cops doing? This seems like a good time to rack up on some suspects. I don't know, maybe this is like an alternate LA where the cops turn a blind eye because of kickbacks or something? Maybe this is like the prequel to Need for Speed Heat, and why in that game the cops are all angry and now have supercars. Eh, whatever, the game's light on plot and that's fine. I never expect plots from racing games. You won't hear me knock points off a title due to a dumb or absent story. Anyway, you create a profile, pick from two cars, and you are ready to race. So how does the game actually play? It's not bad. There's several views you can switch between. There's this not super practical but super cool view where it's behind the driver. This is kind of neat and would be great for replays or compilations. The driving is a little unpredictable. At times, it's stellar, and in the blink of an eye, it's a nightmare. Steering is fine, acceleration and braking, it all works as intended. It's trying to drift or recover from being spun out. If you hit any object, the physics engine might go haywire. Wrecking or spinning out is a certified loss unless you're miles ahead. Getting the car back under control seems near impossible. This wouldn't be a problem if you weren't combating a tough AI. The AI comes in two flavors, brain dead or overpowered. You see, there's a ranking system. Remember that your goal is to be the best racer in LA. You have to climb the ranks to earn a shot at Mr. Peacock. Each race is a 1v1 duel. Winning a race makes you climb the ranks, and losing makes you drop. It's a tall ladder, which makes losing much more miserable. So you have to drive perfectly in order to beat some of the AI. It requires precision and not hitting a single object in a road. I guess you could say that's realistic, but since the two tracks I got to experience were one and two laps, there's not enough room to catch up. The margin for error is minimal. All it takes is one missed turn to lose it all. What elevates the annoying difficulty is the upgrade system. You wait at a rally point for challengers. When one arrives, you can compare stats and decide if you'll accept the race. At the same time, you can wager parts. So you could wager a level 2 engine for level 1 nitrous, that sort of thing. And if you win, you keep both parts. And if you lose, you can kiss that upgrade goodbye. Now, I know plenty of racing games that had sort of a betting system on parts, but I've never seen one kind of dig deep into it and that's the only way to get new parts it's a cool system but losing is a major setback it leads to hoping that another racer will come up with that same part or similar with my luck it's always decals or other cosmetics you don't have to wager but climbing the ranks means racing faster people so you get stuck in a tight spot you need upgrades but you'll also want to play it safe if the race seems dangerous it's a cool idea but an absolute soul crushing grind in the process each rally point has a skill requirement, so I was stuck at the first location the entire time. In the few hours I played, I saw the same two tracks over and over again. Like I said at the beginning of this segment, the environments are really cool. It really sells that late night racing vibe, even if there is no traffic. I mean, thank God there isn't. But it's weird flying down main roads with no other pedestrians or anything like that. There's only one song track, and it's not that great. I've been playing totally unrelated OSTs in the background. Anyway, to sum things up, the fact I've seen the same two tracks over and over again, hearing the same sounds, it just, it's, it's a grind that's not fun. 
trying to climb that ladder just absolutely kills this game for me. And even when you do get it a little higher, you don't necessarily see new content right away. The fact there's no free race mode with multiple cars and tracks also sucks because I wanted to see the rest of the game. I bet there's cool courses, but my patience was extremely tested. Which sucks, man, because there's a good game in here. Besides the visuals and the questionable driving, there is some positive things worth mentioning. There's a damage model present. Crashing into stuff will affect various parts of the vehicle, including tires. It only applies to the race you're currently in, so you don't have to worry about, like, paying for the damages later. And of course, the more damage you acquire, the worse your vehicle controls. Everyone on the ladder has a name, and I always have a soft spot for racing games that actually name the opponents. It lets you create some rivalries in your head. It's a different feeling than seeing something like CPU 4. There's like a, you know, a little bit of immersion there. It makes it feel a little bit more human, you know? But besides those few factors, street racing is unfortunately not worth seeking out unless you want to see the tracks for yourself or you want a serious challenge. I might have been up for it, but since I have a stack of games waiting to be played, I gave up several hours in. Well, that's one game down and many more to go. If you know of any good or interesting racing games I should check out, let me know. See you in the next episode where we race around Tokyo in some really stinky looking cars.